is week 12, class number 11. So we're going to be, um, you know, having a strong finish, going over some of the remainder of the course that's left before we head off into the into the holiday break, and then we're back for the next semester. All right, so I'm going to share my screen now. We're going to get started. And I always appreciate it if you can tell me if you can see my screen. Give me a quick thumbs up or something so I know we're it's all working OK. So we have a few students um, joining me online. I have a smaller number than usual in the classroom as well. I hope everyone's doing OK health wise. And and if you uh, did, if you're not here present at the moment, if you do come in a little later, you can always watch the video as I'm going to be uploading it on YouTube, our YouTube channel. All right, so let's go ahead and um, get started. So you can see my screen, that's good. So this is. Um, week 12, OK, so you should be able to see. Um, this folder that's visible to you, we did. We did conclude the lesson last week with uh, all the other advanced layer capabilities, methods and techniques that we will demonstrate on how to accomplish things like creating a composition in Photoshop. Uh, this will definitely help you with the uh, with the one of the assignments is, that's due today, which is the Facebook ad. I give you ample amount of time to get that finished. So if you do. Um, have any questions, let me know. Like, I think I gave you enough time to get it done. Today's due, right? So hope you guys did good on that. And moving forward, we have two items left. And the two items will be, we have a main project that I'm gonna introduce to you today. And this is gonna be visible now. So this is like the big project. You're gonna be creating a web page design prototype. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make, starting to create a website design in Photoshop. Okay, so you're going to do an actual whole website layout implementation using the same system you're learning in your other classes. Uh, whether it's the HTML, CSS, the JavaScript stuff, this can really help you in terms of getting the, the design ready to go. All right. So therefore, this is uh, finally the project that's going to help you really hone in on these production web production techniques. Uh, we started with the Illustrator class, of course. You guys learning how to make logos and little graphic design type of changes with typography and other design elements. Uh, so now we're in Photoshop, and all these things are important, creating like designs, layouts, and photo compositions and stuff. This will really raise the bar in terms of what you can do when it comes to utilizing the Photoshop techniques you're going to learn and how to create an actual functioning website. Now, there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of different options from here once you design the prototype. Uh, one good reason you want to do this is before you even lay your hands on any HTML, you want to present the client of the option of the design. A lot of times the designs look very, very um, prototype like. I'm going to show you some of the rough designs that are out there, and then you'll see the importance of doing this. I know uh, my colleague Felipe touched up on this with you guys with the UX UI design class how prototyping is important, right? Are you guys using XD or Figma, or what are you guys using for that class? Are you, are you, are you doing mobile prototypes or desktop prototypes? M mobile prototypes, right? Okay. So these days I know you have to think both. You have to think responsive uh, measures with desktop to mobile. So we're definitely gonna cover both aspects in here as well. The difference is we're gonna use Photoshop, okay? And you can definitely take Photoshop into XD. So if you do want to take the prototype to the next level, you can definitely save the Photoshop file, open it up, let's say in XD, and create the navigation and everything. That's a far less easier to accomplish from a design standpoint to sell the project to the client before they commit to the development of the website. Then you develop the website. Then you start getting your dev team together and you implement all the programming that's required in the back end to get the website published. Okay, so this is why we're learning these um, different methods of delivery. 
So this is your last project, okay? So you're gonna create a one page responsive scrolling website. Now when I say one page, um, you're gonna have to create a mobile and a desktop version. So I might have to maybe just um, elaborate on this a little better. Um, so it's gonna be like a one long page design, okay? If you wanna make multiple pages, you can, but because this is like a prototype template and I'll show you what a lot of them look like, the one page should say enough about the look of the website because you can put everything on that one page. So we're going to do a one page uh, prototype concept design in Photoshop. You're going to use a large format 1920 1080 to start with, but this will definitely increase the number as you scroll down because when you scroll down to the website, it could be like two to three thousand pixels. Nobody really measures the, the height of the website, but it's there by default when you put adding more blocks and content the website becomes more scrollable so definitely this number will have to increase as we do the prototyping uh, there's also the regular format which is 1400 by 1400 pixels i'll show you this later how photoshop looks at these dimensions so these are some of the methods i want you to incorporate what you've learned in this class things like layer masks and selections are going to be used on some of the images to show transparency Various image placements and methods are to be demonstrated among with graphics. I want to see a grayscale wireframe mockup. This is very important because this teaches you the proper delivery of how wireframes work. So before you do a, a high fidelity mockup, you're going to do a low fidelity mockup. So I'm going to teach you how to make these things today. And next week we're going to get into some other stuff as well. High fidelity complete mockup showing the nav bar along with additional assets. Okay, so the assets are going to be something that's going to lead to this other point here, which is the generation of assets for the HTML and the CSS. So you can definitely generate assets from Photoshop to help you with the HTML. So it's not just design, you can take these same graphics and add them to the real website. That's what's good about this. Okay. A Photoshop format is the final submission along with the image assets. So you're going to zip everything for me. I'm going to show you what other students have handed in in the past. So you can kind of get a clear understanding of the delivery items. Mobile conversion size to fit, to fit most current device, device sizes because they always change it. So whatever the current standard is, if it's an iPhone X 15-4, that's what you're going to maybe do it on, okay? I totally made that up, by the way. What's the latest iPhone, 15? 15, okay? I lost count since 12, 13, right? Even the Samsungs and all the other devices, like there's only a certain amount they can go to, right? So whatever the current format is, we'll stick with that one. Good luck and have fun. I always put that in there. And uh, that's exactly what we're gonna do. This is like the last big project for this class. Just like you did the Illustrator banner for me with the first module or the illustrator this is like your photoshop delivery because it's web production techniques what better way to finish it off than creating a website in photoshop with the web production techniques in mind okay all right so this is your breakdown here this is out of i think 30 percent so it's a good chunk of your mark so make sure you take care of it and this is just an example of what we do in class this is not a final product I mean, it could be if you want to look at it this way. It's just a simple design, but you're going to do a lot better than this. OK, this is just like an exercise we did. I'll show you a lot better examples in this one. OK, this is just something that we're going to do in class. We're going to create a header like a, the nav bar. We're going to create some sections, some typography, headers, titles, content, paragraphs, images. You can put a video in there if you want. You can put many different things these days. A website consists of many, many things. So I want you to treat it like that, and you're going to basically put your best foot forward and make this thing look really nice, OK? Alrighty. so this is due on the last day of school. So I gave you to, to whatever I can to submit it, OK? And this way we'll make the best use of our time. This is due on the 13th of December, which is, of course, the last class. So considering this is week 12, we have week 13 next week, week 14, and then week 15 is the last class. This is due week 15, and that'll be our 14th class. 
we're probably going to do like an overall review. Maybe we'll do a little presentation if you guys want. We can show the websites so everybody can see it. We'll do like a nice little grand finale, okay? I like to do that usually. With the other class over there, we make them present, like present presentations. We don't do that in your, your semester for some reason. We just don't do presentations. I don't know why nobody kind of decided to do it. But if you guys want to start that trend, I don't mind, you know, Re, uh, you know, revisiting that option as well. We used to make you present the collaborative assignments. So you got to come up here and talk. How cool is that? <laughs> Would you like to do that? <laughs> Most of you are going like, no, I don't want to do that. But it's good to prepare you for like doing stuff like presentations and things. It's, plus you're, but now you're, you're comfortable with each other, right? You've been together for like, you know, a few months, so it's going to be a good way for you to get more comfortable. Alrighty, so let's go back to our modules now for today. We're going to be looking at the um, so class 10, class 11 Photoshop website. We concluded this layers zip folder. This was a very good one. Um, there's one file there I left for you to revisit today just to practice. I think it's important. You know, to teach you Photoshop, I mean, it's 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 a lot of little lessons in itself expanded into one huge module. Um, this was this is why I took the most important things and I taught them to you last week and the week before and all the other classes. So today I'm going to go over the important exercise and then we'll get into the website. So if you have this folder from last week, just watch me do this and you can uh, basically relate to what I'm going to go over. So this is the layers.zip file. If you haven't already, you want to download all these other sources like web page image sources. We're going to make a website using this today. OK, the web template PSD file, the website mockup and the desktop mobile. These are just supplementary files that we're going to look at. So download all of them if you haven't. Last week I asked you to do so anyhow, so you do have that uh, visible. All right, so let me just quickly go in here. So last week we covered all these. Remember, we did the helicopter. We did the we did a little bit of a generative AI, how AI works really well. We can keep maybe using a little bit of the AI features today too with the website. It might help us. Uh, this is the one that I really wanted you to review. This is a good overall review of the last week's lesson, okay? So this is pretty much covers all the important Photoshop techniques for web production, okay? Any production, not just web. So let me just um, show you this and go over it quickly, and then we're gonna start with the website. All right, so this is um, a PDF handout on the steps that you need to take in order to complete these exercises. So this relates to this file. So ignore these two. This is the finished version. This is what it ends up looking like. It's like a banner, I think, for Photoshop we did, right? But this is your start document. So when it says uh, open zero layer, when it says open zero layer start, it means open zero layer start, right? So when you open that, it should open in Photoshop because it's a PSD file. So naturally, it's going to open the file in its native application, and then it's going to look like this. And then we're going to select the layer, go to 50% opacity, set the layer to 50% opacity. You just follow the instructions. Rename the layer Stripe. Rename the layer Stripe. So following instructions is important, so you can know how to basically do that also in terms of getting familiar with the application and utilizing all these techniques together. And then of course it gets get into, so this is how you start. Then you get to merge documents. How do you merge documents in Photoshop? There's a step for that as well. How to do a proper scale? There's a method for that also. Scale is very important, resizing, transforming, rotating, maybe adding some perspective, maybe some distortion. There's different ways of um, scaling. Then there's blending. Blending is also a powerful 
effect in Photoshop where you can do lots of different things with the blend attributes. Then there's masking. Masking we covered last week, remember? With the helicopter, the fish, the frog, the robot, and all that stuff, right? Then there's effects. We did that with the Planet of the Apes poster, remember? We had the planet, the text, and we did we double clicked, and we did some of the drop shadow glow. That's the effects. A lot of the effects are done in Photoshop on typography and images. So we're gonna go over that as well. Then there's clipping. Okay, clipping is an advanced form of clipping mask. So it's like putting a mask on something. You can see right through that object only. And clipping can help us build a website because if you have a rectangle and you want to put an image in the rectangle. It clips the outside edges so it fits perfectly in that rectangle. That's how masking can work with layer clipping. Then, of course, saving. That's the very most important part. And the last part of the exercise, how to say, save a proper image. Um, I don't know about the TIFF thing, but whatever. We can do a TIFF, flatten it, duplicating it, things like that. So it's a good little comprehensive review exercise that continues from last week. Is it too much information? I know for you to remember, but this is a good little refresher and to go over some of the important things that we covered as well. OK, so that's what this is for. So without further ado, let's let's start with this one. You can just watch me if you like. You can follow me along, whatever you prefer. If you have two monitors, sometimes I always tell my students if you can invest in two monitors, like let's say I have one here, I have one here. You can easily watch me on one monitor and do your work on the other monitor. OK, it's this way you have a lot of questions you can ask me along the way. Uh, so that's the whole point. Uh, it's not just recording the video, but it's also having you interact the same time that I'm doing this delivery. All right, so here's the document. Here's my instructions. Let's get started. So first thing it says, open the file, scale the layer 50% opacity and do 50% opacity. So basically, this is the layer that it's referring to. It says, go to 50% opacity. So what do I do? I go to opacity and I go to 50%. Look what happened. The black became semi-transparent. So could, because before, this was, uh, right? It was just a solid black shape, right? With 50% opacity, it's a semi-transparent shape. This is called a screen. A lot of websites use screens because you can read the text better. Sometimes you do a light screen or a dark screen, depending on how you want the visibility, visibility to be. Because if there's no screen, look what happens. You can't read PS doc full layers. It's hard to read this, this layer. It's, it's, it's kind of lost in the background with the images and the clouds. So a lot, of, a lot of designers, what they do is they put a screen, whether it's a horizontal or vertical screen, so you can actually read the text better and you put the text on top of the screen and you see this quite a bit on apps websites banners headers all kinds of stuff so this is again 50 percent and i'm just following these steps right here i'm also going to rename the layer stripe like the payment method on the internet sites there that we use so we're going to go ahead and use this call it stripe and i think i misspelled it here by accident so we'll call it stripe that's the name of that layer. All right. So this is how I started. Now I'm going to continue merging the documents. It says open tree.psd. So if it's easier for you, like honestly, these files are not even necessary. Just these are your exercise files. I don't, I have them here for the last exercise. That's why. Yeah. It's hard to say because depending on on the colors that you have to use and the colors you have to work with. Um, I don't know if you guys ventured into this. Color has always been a tricky topic. I would stay away from sometimes like contrasting colors work really well. But if you look at the color wheel, there's different like complementary colors, right? RGB colors. You want to definitely stay away from the pastels. Sometimes they don't go well with the RGB colors themselves. But let's see. Uh, I think there's a website here. 
Adobe Color Wheel, right? Have you guys seen the Adobe Color Wheel before? So basically, this also gives you a nice little color composition of. Uh, right? So you can you can honestly go ahead and venture into different colors here. Um, if you do like the opposites, this could give you that resemblance here. I use this as a guide sometimes, Adobe Color. I don't cover this because I think Felicia does it with you guys in the other class. I don't want to repeat things, right? But this is a good way for you to kind of look at that color aspect. Another way is just study your colors, you know? There's colors that hold you different level of learning too. Um, it's important, right? So look at the colors that I have over there. So to answer your question, and maybe I'll use that light color and I'll pick one of my darker contrasting colors. So the background was water splash. Uh -huh. And the blue color was blue as well. I was trying to use the blue color, but I thought that it's not going around with the background. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you can, um, I would always go with the neutral colors too, like even black and white goes with any color. Okay, because you put red and blue on black or white, they go together too, even green, right? Once you start mixing green and blue, it's not going to go too well. Or, or black too, right? With the screens, right? If you look at them. So this is why when we go here, we have this black screen. Because if this color was different, if this was, let's say, I'll do a color overlay, like a blue screen, It'll still work maybe, but you're taking a chance or a risk with other colors that might conflict, right? So that's why black and white's your best colors for screen, right? All right, so let's continue here. I'm gonna go open the tree.psd file next. So tree PSD color, that, that is right in my folder here. There's tree.psd, it's a Photoshop file. If it's not a Photoshop file, what do you do? You right click and you open it in Photoshop. So you can always open the document in the desired application. So there's the tree. Now, how do you move the tree? How do you drag it into the start layer? See, the, I don't like, I don't mind these handouts, but they don't really tell you how to do it. They just tell you to do it. So how do you do it? How do I drag a tree to here? <laughs> right? So what, what, cause look, once you drag the tree, it's like people, oh no, where's the tree? It's gone. Panic sets in. Like, how do you drag it there? So you have to literally hold the mouse. I have a mouse, by the way. I go up here. I let go. I don't let go. I mean, I, I move the mouse here. I keep the mouse held the whole time and then I let go. And that's how the tree gets dragged. You see how tricky that was? Because in earlier versions, watch this. If you move this away like that, it becomes a separate window. It was a lot easier back in the day because the windows were separated. You could just go like this, drag and drop, right? But no more. So now everything's tabbed and uh, nicely tucked in and stuff. So this now is a floating window. To put it back, you drag it here. See that it turns blue, you let go, it's tabbed. So these are tabs. That's how most modern applications uh, are all designed with their new UX type of protocol in mind. The reason is to keep it more compact when it comes to responsive measures of screens, applications, you know, that's why. So you can do it several ways, drag and drop, right? And that's how you would basically put the tree into the right place, okay? How can you drag? It should be able to work at the same so time. Depends what kind of mask. I think most of them should work. Let's try it on this tree right now. So let's say this had a mask, right? I'm going to give it a layer mask right now, right? A layer mask. And I'm going to go ahead and do this. There, okay? So I have a mask with this tree. So make sure 
this is selected as a whole. This whole layer is selected. Because if I drag this whole thing now from the layers, not from the image, because if you drag it from the image, you might be only dragging this thumbnail. But if you click on the whole layer like this, and then you do this, it drags them both. And I don't blame you because you're thinking it's the same thing. What's the difference? I'm selecting the image, I'm selecting the layer. So you want to make sure you select the entire package, package containing the mask and the image right to it. Okay. Good question, though. All right, let's put this one away. What's the next uh, thing here? Select the move tool. Very important, ladies and gentlemen, the move tool. You have to always know that's the tool. Your go-to tool is this one here, the move tool, because eventually you're going to move something and click on something and select something. That's how the move tool works. So make sure you're always instinctively selecting the move tool at most times. And then you have the um, reorder the layers. So let's make sure it's above the background. Um, and that's the case here. Just it's on top of all the other layers. All right, next, scale. Open the balloon PSD file. Select the magic eraser tool. This is a nice review of the, some of the basic tools in Photoshop. Click on the blue sky and the blue document. Drag the balloon layer. Select edit free transform. So this is now showing us how to scale documents or scale images inside other compositions. So let's go ahead and open. So let's, are we done with the tree? Yes, we are. Keep this, um, keep this here. Keep this over here and open this over here. So there's the balloon, right? Open it up. Remember this tool here, the magic eraser tool? This works on any color, white, blue, red. So if you click on this background image right here, look what happens. It gets rid of the background. So now you can go ahead and drag, drop, you're still merging documents back and forth. Oh, that's way too big. So I press Command T, transform, remember? Or Control T. In this case, edit, free, transform will do the trick. And you hold Shift. In my case, in your case, you might not have to hold Shift to constrain the proportions. And of course, we're going to keep the balloon here. Press Enter. You have to press Enter, and the, the transformation is done. Okay. So these are some of the things you have to do from one document to another when you mix everything together in one composition. So I'm going to put this one away. Don't save. So the next is uh, blend. So the blend the elements are already given to you. You just have to twirl down the triangle on the layers folder. So what, what does that mean? Um, let's go ahead and look. So there's the layers folder. There's the little triangle it's referring to. This is called a group. When you have so many layers in one document, like the text layer, you can select multiple layers and press Command G and put them in a group, like a folder holding files. Because you can have like 100 layers. How do you keep track of them all, right? Especially if it's a website. So you have like a layer for the, for the top, a layer for the middle, Let's say we call it the header or the nav bar, the main section, the footer. You can break it up into different categories. This will help you basically organize your workflow. So when it's saying um, turn down the triangle on the layers folder, it means basically look for this folder here and twirl it down means expand it. Just like you would do a normal file management scenario. See this here? If I go back, look at my layers here, right? Look, I got list view, I got thumbnail view, right? Watch this, I'll press command A, I'll press command right. I'll open all of them at the same time. Command left, command right. Shortcuts that open folders and file structures on a computer, right? So now I can see all my subfolders as a list view. Photoshop implemented the same structure as, a, as an OS, an operating system, whether it's Mac or PC, doesn't matter. You come here, the same thing happens, you can open these folders up. All right, uh, so next thing is now 
the visibility of the blend modes folder to on. So this is the blend modes on. OK, this is that means this is visible. And then we're going to do. Soft light. And change it to soft light. What is soft light? Soft light is a blend mode. So if this one says soft light and I make it visible, look what happens. Does that look soft? Light or soft dark. Right? So because it's dark to change the appearance, you can do the opposite light or dark. Doesn't matter. You can go up here and change it to lighten. Sorry, soft light. This one, soft light. So now you can see how it has a nice soft light to it, right? Um, what's the next one here? Color me and change the blend layer with color. So this one says color me, make it visible. It's a nice yellowy base. All these are like little, little like faded attributes like colors and fills. You can make this like yourself with a brush or make a selection. So this now will be set to color. There's color, color right down here. It definitely adds more green to the green that's the background. So if you turn it on and off, it does it or, or settles it down, I should say a little bit. So it's more natural. And again, these are not, you have to do this. This is just opening different ways you can work with images and layers. Uh, sometimes they might look better without this, right? Who's to say? So you are the designer. You get to decide what you want to do with these things. You get to change color modes and stuff. Last one, overlay me and change it to overlay. So this is overlay layer right here. Watch this. So it looks like this, right? It looks very blah and, uh, and kind of like faded. So if I change it to overlay, right? It gives it more contrast like this, see? So these three different layer attributes that we just did, before, after, before, after. It gives you more of that photo finish contrast design just by simply working with different layers. Right? Yeah. You asked me about the animated GIF, right? I'll do, do, do GIF next week with the GIFs. But the thing is about the GIFs. Um, to animate them with with a cursor code, you have to you have to put the code in there. I, I don't remember the code. It's a JavaScript. You can get online, but once you create the effect, you can interlate it with the transition. So you can definitely do that. All right. Next, uh, mask. Turn the visibility of the gauge color. This is again last week what we did. The gauge. Reorder the layer group. Put on top of the strip. Add a layer mask and blah 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 blah. Okay. So. This is the gauge right here. This is the gauge, right? The gauge layer. I'm going to drag it on top of the stripe layer. I'm going to use the move tool and move it over here. See the gauge, right? I'm going to press Command T, make it a little bigger so we can see it better. There we go, right? I don't like how that's getting cut off like that. So I'm going to fix it using a mask method. So what I'm going to do is go to layer mask, layer, layer mask, reveal all to give it a layer mask. Once I do that, this second thumbnail showed up, the mask layer. Then I can use any brush technique, and I can use black or white, black in this case, to get rid of this type of the layer. And if I go too much, I say, oops, I made a mistake. The next day, the next week, I can always go press X and using the white fill, I can bring it back. And using the black fill, I can take it away. So you can really, really perfect the mask the way you want it to look like, okay? That's how wonderful this, then I can maybe take away this part here, right? Because again, having a mask, you can always use black and white to bring it back whenever you want. The eraser, it's very amateur. Once you erase it, it's gone forever. You can't bring it back. If you save the file and you open it the next day, it ran, you know, copy paste only works while the computer's on. If you restart the computer, copy and paste is irrelevant. You have to do another copy and paste. You understand? Same thing with this method here. It's only temporary memory. When you do undo, command Z, control Z, control Z, it only works while you're working. It's a limited time allotted to the file. 
while the computer is on. The program is running. If you shut the computer off or you restart the program, you're erasing all this memory. You're wiping it all out. So that's why this is important because you retain the memory forever. This is always there. You can always change it. You can always erase it, press X and bring it back, right? Anytime. That's why this is more like an advanced approach to controlling your transparencies in Photoshop. Okay. Um, effects. So effects is when you throw down on the triangle on the text folder. So basically we're going to apply effects on the text over there. That's the most, I guess, go to option for most people that want to do effects. So which effect are we going to do? Drop, shatter, auto glow and emboss the more popular three. Okay. So we're going to go click on this uh, Photoshop document. Let me move it over a bit. It's a little too close to the edge. All right, so we're going to go. We'll make this a little bigger. Make this a little bigger. I just want to make it a little bigger here so you can see it better. Right. So if you double click on the side of the layer, remember the best way is to double click or to click on the effects here and choose the effect that you want to apply. Either way, you're going to be presented with the same option. So if I click bevel and emboss, it's going to open up this palette. So you still have to change your attributes matching the outcome. So again, I prefer doing this uh, double click. Open the panel and then you can start from scratch. Say I want bevel and emboss. So I'm going to increase the size. See the size it's increasing. I'm going to increase the softness, right? So basically changing these attributes, changing the bevel of the type. Looks like it's popping up. Emboss means emboss. Deboss means deboss. Like it's going in instead of out. Like I don't know if you see things that are like the cutting boards at home. You might have a cutting board and you see like a logo carved into the wood. Plate. Right? The license plate. Thank you. Very good example. License plate. So this is more like a license plate effect on your car. Now this one can be also inner bevel. You can also do emboss. You can also do pillow emboss. This one looks like it's being chiseled in. Right? Emboss. The boss is trickier. I think you have to do an inner shadow with that. It's not an emboss. It's an inner shadow that makes it look like it's cut in. I can show you. Let me just let me do. OK, so. Yeah, I'm just thinking right now. I used it not too long ago myself. Yeah, I used it for an anytime fitness ad. Let me show you. Yeah, the gym. We, we're doing these digital screens. So watch this. Let me do anytime. Anytime fitness. I'll show you that what you're talking about. You know what here? Let me just do it this way. There, look at that phone number. See how it's it's inside. Looks like it's kind of hidden behind the background. That's how the phone number looks like. OK, so that's like an ad that we did, like a business card kind of display. So this is what the emboss looks like. All right, so back again to the file here. How do we how do we achieve all these different, um, you know, visual effects in Photoshop? is you double click on the layer and let's say you want to do in emboss like the inner drop shadow you do what's called inner shadow okay and you can increase the amount and the stroke and the color so this looks like it's actually now cutting in a little bit okay i want to do also a glow so outer glow might be a little too much at once but sure let's go ahead and change the that's a lot of. Um, oh. Sorry, I'm on the wrong one here. Inner glow. There we go. 
So the size, right? And we have the, the spread, the opacity, inner shadow. This was supposed to be a little more. Right? So I'm adding a glow, a shadow, and I don't think you don't want to do too much. I know it's telling me to do another one. It's telling me to do the, um, you know, drop shadow, but whatever. You can do many things as you want. You can, I don't think three is too much, right? Because if you look at this now, let me click OK. OK, the resolution is not good, but you can see how you can add all these different things. If I don't like that green, let's say that green is not really fitting in too well, I can always go back to the outer glow and change the color from green, maybe to this like yellow or something, right? I can change the color of it to something else if I feel necessary, right? Maybe that orange or that green, right? Uh, so we can definitely make adjustments accordingly, right? That's what Photoshop is good for. Because you can change things like this, no problems. And other programs can't really compete to the level that Photoshop can when it comes to these effects because they're very customizable. All right, so we did the effects. Clipping. So clipping is something that we're going to cover. This will segue to the website thing that we're going to do after this, like the actual exercise. But to show you how clipping works here, there's a layer called Clip Me Down. And you're going to select the clipping mask on the layer here. So basically for this next one, I'm going to look for this. Um, it says clip me down. This is like a texture. There goes the design. It covers the whole thing. The texture covers everything. And what's there? It's called the hawk. There's a picture of a hawk. Let me show you what the hawk looks like. A beautiful looking hawk here. I'm going to make sure this is. So every time I move the hawk, it moves this layer. Map. How do I prevent that from happening? Lock it. Very good. So this this layers layer here, like especially this one, the blend modes. When I'm done, I close them. I go up here and I press the lock button. If I lock the attributes, that means I can't move the background. I can easily move the hawk to wherever I want to. Right. So that's how you can move the um, the layers without affecting the ones that are locked. You you want the hawk to fly? No, I just want to see the possibility of... You know, you know what? I love how Z's asking me all these questions because the answer is yes. Have I ever said no? <laughs> it's always yes, you can. But this is how you do it. You can actually, you know what? Let's do that. I, I really like I really like that, actually. We'll make, you guys want to see the talk go like this? Yeah? You, you think I can do it? <laughs> this is not an animation program, but there is there is ways to do it. Yes, there is. Uh, especially now with uh, Adobe Animates, it used to be the former Flash. You can put um, you can put pivot points on like pins, and these pins then you can change different pixel attributes like in Ben, and it'll work like an animated sequence. So yes, we can make the hawk fly if we want to. But first, let me first show you what I was getting at here. So we have this texture, and basically they want me to clip the texture into the hawk by going to um, layer create clipping mask so if i select this texture layer here if i go to layer create clipping mask right here look what happens very carefully okay i want to do that the texture went inside the hawk you see i don't really like the effect to be honest with you but you know how else you can do it faster watch my hands option click between the two layers, there's a little thing like this. You can release it and do it. Release it and do it. Right? So I don't like this. I'm just going to delete it. Right? Same as the balloon. Watch this. Option click. Actually, the balloon has to be. Let me let me put the balloon here. Right? And let's put the balloon on top of the stripe. See? So it works in, in conjunction with layers underneath it. So basically, that's how this stuff works. I'm just going to press Command Z. So option click. I'll do it next next uh, next exercise with the website. We'll do lots of image clipping inside the website. So this will be repeated later. So don't worry if you don't really grasp it right now. But let's get back to the hawk. I really want to make this Harris hawk fly. 
So we make a copy of the hawk. We press command J. So we have two copies of the hawk, right? Two copies. We select the second copy. We go to make sure it's a smart object. Yes, we might have to rasterize it. Let's go to edit, transform. I'm looking for the, oh, there's puppet warp. Puppet warp's right here. There's there's warp and there's puppet warp. We can do either one. The puppet warp is the more expanded one. Look what happens now. Photoshop was able to create all these different, uh, it's like an actual uh, wireframe grid model of the hawk, which means I can definitely now go, whoops, I gotta put a point here. Put a point over here. Put a point here, there, here, here, and here, right? I'll put a point over here. I'll put a point over there. Basically, I'm putting all these little stacks of, of symmetry. I'm going to move this one over here. Whoops. Put one here and put these ones over here as well. Once you put the pins in place, you can then move these pins to different positions like this. All right? And you can move these pins over here like this. And next week, we'll, or the week after, we're going to do the animation. So you'll see how this, press enter, right? Now watch this. Oh. So you have this visible and this invisible, right? This segues into the next lesson for next time. I'll quickly show you. I'll do the, an, um, I'll, it used to be called animation. Now it's called the timeline. The timeline gives you the animated presence of it. Yeah. Sorry? What? 10%? What do you mean? Yeah, frame to frame, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. It's, it's going to be a simple frame to frame animation. Yeah. So look at this one frame here. Look what I'm going to do now. I'm going to make this one invisible, right? Next frame. I'm going to make this invisible and make this visible. Right? And I'm going to make the duration of this uh, half a second. So now if you do press the play button, Hi, a fly, hawk, fly. Okay, it's flying. <laughs> and then, yeah, this, see, doing little things like this make people pay attention. That's why you see a lot of advertising, marketing, they have little, like the coffee cup, you have uh, the little puppy here, the eyes will blink or something, or the color. Simple animation. You don't have to do Walt Disney animation here. It takes a lot of time and effort, but even something simple like this, Maybe I can do three frames. Maybe I'll go like this, like this, like this, like that. Not just like that. Maybe a little more advanced and, and more modified in detail. And that's how you can really make things work. Like the clock, maybe it'll go like the, you know, the, the clock sequence. Little things like that make effective marketing. Uh, next week, we're going to do this, okay? We're going to get all everybody on board. This was just because you asked a question. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. And I haven't really done this puppet warp in a while. I hope Photoshop kept it, and it did. Thank goodness. All right, so yes, we made the hawk fly, ladies and gentlemen. That's how we, we, yeah, we can do anything we want in Photoshop. This is right now playing. The only way to ex export this, if this was a website and this was a banner, I got to say this as a GIF. The only other option is a video, because that's the only way we can capture multiple frames per second. Uh, if you say this is a JPEG, JPEG's not going to show you animation. Neither is a PNG, only a GIF, right? So again, look how it's flipping frames. One, two, one, two. And I gave them a duration of 0.5. 0 0.5 means half a second, half a second. So it's less than a second, the half. Uh, yes. So here's what's beautiful about this. Watch this. I'm going to do save as. By the way, I'm, I'm down to the last 
part of the exercise here, which I'm going to answer your next question. We're going to save. Oh, it says flattened. I don't want to flatten it because if I do that, I'm going to lose all my layers. It's good if you if you want to make this a, a banner for a website. Yeah, you flatten it, make it a JPEG, save it as a JPEG, right? But if you want to go to the next step and go to XD and do some other stuff, then you save it as a full. So how do you flatten it first? It says um, duplicate, rename, flatten. So if I go to um, image, duplicate. So this, it just creates a copy of the file. See? And you name it copy. So now you have a two copies. That's all it is, right? And this one you can go, you know, layer, flatten image. Right? And look, it's flat. No more hawk flying, nothing. It's done. This is the grand finale right here. And you save this as whatever format. I know they're saying TIFF here. That's for printing. But if you want to do stuff for web, then we're doing web production. We're going to do basically, you know, save a copy. And you can save this as a JPEG. So this is good to go for a website right now. Why did I choose JPEG? Because I'm looking at the images, has a lot of photography, a lot of detail and pixels and stuff. So JPEG for me would be a good option for this. And the file size will be smaller. So I'm gonna go ahead and say this is a JPEG. And uh, the, the size, I like to keep it at 10. 12 is a little not necessary. 10 will give me a good amount. It's still maximum quality. Hit OK. And now this is ready to go on a website, okay? On a website meaning, you know, this is the JPEG here, right? So this could be like a banner or some kind of a splash screen, maybe an ad of some kind. How big is this file? I'll do command I. It's 229 kilobytes. So it's quite small in size, accepted by most, you know, web dev teams. They'll say, yeah, you know, 20K, make sure something before we would have size restrictions. The banner could not exceed. 100k sometimes like an animated banner right so you have to make sure that was that was the things um so that's why like if you see banners like i put a banner yesterday on one of my dental directory websites this is my platform that i i showed you guys before this is one of my other projects that i do so my banner that i put here for an advertiser they wanted to put a banner down here okay see this is a this is not an animation banner it's just an image of a jpeg right but if I click on my blog section on the website, uh, these guys here have a GIF. So those guys here, Braid in Canada, they have a, a, a GIF playing and a promotion. And you see that a lot. Google does that, ad AdWords and all that kind of stuff. So this is how we do the, the GIFs. This is a GIF too. See, look, if you can see here, the mouth, it's snapping the process of implants going in the mouth, and then it's gonna go snap, see? If you click on this, of course, it takes you to that part of the website. I did this too, by the way. <laughs> so we did the whole animation, and it was very simple. Photoshop did this for us to show the patient how easy it is to put, you know, four um, different screws and abutments, implants, and you put a whole jaw. Because a lot of people get their teeth done these days, you know, because when you turn 60, 70 years old, you have probably need new teeth. And you have to spend $20,000, maybe $40,000, or go to, uh, Go to our neighbors down south and get it done cheaper, <laughs> right? So a lot of people do that too. So this is the process of how it's done. And the other one is, uh, where does this one go again? And that goes to the same place. Okay, there was another implant website we had. All right, so back to the thing here. Now, okay, so that's how we take care of JPEGs and, and PNG files. But what happens now if I want to make this an actual animated GIF? So. The second file, the original file, if I go to file, export, save for web, okay? So this is the new thing that we're going to get into from Photoshop. You're, you're producing graphics for web. This is, you know, hence the web production techniques that we're doing here. So, and design, so we're going to export this. And, and the only way to capture this animation is if you do a GIF, or some people call it a GIF. It's, it's till today, it's an arguable uh, pronouns, right? GIF, GIF, and, and I still call it GIF because it's graphic image format. I don't know why people argue about this, but whatever. So GIF, right? And what it's gonna happen is with the GIF, it's gonna get all the, 
GIF has a limit of 256 colors. It's not a good format, but it looks okay when it comes to animation because it can do it. It just it won't be as clear as other formats. That's why you don't use GIF a lot unless it's animation. Before it was for us, it was transparency and animation because GIFs do support transparency too. See, there's a transparency option, but there's not necessary because there's nothing transparent here. It's all one image with the animation. So I'm going to go with GIF. Adaptive is the color palette. I, you can use the other ones, they all work. I go by the default detection that Photoshop does, a diffusion, all this stuff, you can leave it alone. The maximum colors is 256. You can't, you can go less, 16, but look like it looks all grainy and stuff. Two up and four up give you a comparison of what other options can give you. So I would just stick with optimized. Look, I'll go to four colors, see? So two colors. Back in 1986. I was very, I, was, I don't even know how to use a computer back then, but yeah, this was back then. And now with 256 is the maximum for GIFs. So if we go ahead and hit the save button, right? Because that's what we want, save. We're going to call this images only. Make sure not HTML because it's going to give you like a table design. You're not going to be happy. We're going to call it uh, Flyhawk, okay? Flyhawk.gif or on the desktop. Save images only. And that's how you can produce an animation for a website. And we're going to do this more in depth again later because we're going to focus on websites and GIFs. So this is just a good little preliminary on how to get it done. And here's the difference again with the two. So this is the JPEG. Yeah, it looks nice, right? But if you go to the GIF, it's got a little more pizzazz to it, right? It's got movement. That's why the GIF is maybe a little more effective when it comes to social media marketing, websites, all kinds of other things. What's the size difference? Well, the JPEG is probably smaller. It's 228 kilobytes. And the, the GIF is 573. How come it's more if it's less pixels? It's the animation. You're doubling up that effort into the other one. So it's always going to be more. I'm, I'm surprised it's only 500. Sometimes it's one meg. If you had more frames, probably two megs. So you got to be careful on how you do the animation. It's even showing in the preview here. All right, so that was an all in all review uh, exercise from where we left off last week. So I hope that was helpful. Again, I did this step by step. This is being recorded right now and you can actually watch the video and definitely you can see, uh, you know, the, all these steps that we did with, um, I think I closed the folder back in it. Right, class 11 web, sorry, class 10 layers. So this was the entire exercise we did from start to finish. I just did this whole thing here and you can do yourself. I suggest if you haven't, most of you are watching me, I really strongly suggest you do this on your own. Um, I used to even make this an assignment people handed in at the class, but honestly with the time that we have, I'd rather you focus your energy on the projects, okay? So just do this on your own goodwill, okay? I don't need to monitor you that you did it, but this is definitely something that I give my students an exercise in the classroom to do it, okay? So do it on your own time, because I'd rather invest the time to teach you more stuff, right? So this is the file that you can, you can use to practice this file here. All right, um, so that's that. So now let's go to class number 11. This is week number 12 again. So this is what we're up for today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a, like to show you how to create multiple artboards. And first to show you why to consider maybe doing this in a different way. Of course, there's the header, the body and the footer for, for both. Uh, this is a wireframe grayscale low fidelity mockup. So this can be like any type of website you can design. You can just drag the images or the sources inside. And this is more like a high fidelity example mockup of a website too. Um, if I open this up for you, it's a Photoshop file. Uh, this is an existing website that's done from a professional, a lot of professional templates. If you join these other websites, they give you Photoshop templates because Photoshop templates become the websites. So you can extract these images and put them on a real website. That's why this one is set up as a 12 column grid. So if I zoom in here, 
Like if you look at these folders, look at all these folders that I have. Look, I have the, the header, right, which is the nav bar. I have the slide. I have the banner, which is over here. I have the testimonials. I have the uh, specials. Okay, and I have the footer. This is not finished for a reason because I wanted I, another exercise for you to mess around with to get acquainted with how this works. So basically, you keep the guides on and you can take these things and put them in the right place. So I would maybe move this here, move this over here, move this down here, and move this over here, move this guy over here, and move her over here, right? So you can basically see how Photoshop can design these layouts in a way. Uh, who speaks the Latin language here? What does it say? What does that say? Nostros Comensales? Is it comments, like a blog, or just? No? Does it mean anything? No? OK. Anybody else? I know it's Latin. They use lorem ipsum for this one. Lorem ipsum is a Latin derivative language. Uh, you know how old lorem ipsum is? How old is lorem ipsum? You guys know lorem ipsum, right? It's like a dummy text they use for, huh? Dummy text, yeah, lorem ipsum. Lorem ipsum is used for any like default text that you can place on graphics, images, and stuff. Today I'm going to give you a history lesson too. Lorem ipsum, okay? Because for fun, people make other ipsum. There's now there's minion ipsum, coffee ipsum. If you're doing something with, let's say I'm doing a coffee website, I can do coffee ipsum, cupcake ipsum. There's all kinds of ipsums. They're copycats. So if I do coffee ipsum and I want to make, I'm doing a website and I need dummy text for now because I'm not going to get real content from the client. I have to still work on the design. I'm going to go to espresso size. I can do normal size, grande. It's like going to Starbucks, right? What kind of, what size coffee do you want? I'll, I'll do, I'll do normal size. I'm gonna do three, uh, three paragraphs, right? And I'm gonna go, and there's my three paragraphs. And look at the, and I can copy this as HTML with the break tag, or I can copy it as text. Look at the content. It's all coffee related things like Cortrado, spoon flavor, creme, aftertaste, coffee, wings, copy, lawa, carjalo, right? But if you go lorem ipsum, it's all Latin based terms. Now, lorem ipsum is. Ready for this one? It's over 500 years old. 500 years. So, lorem ipsum is the dummy text of the printing and typesetting industry. Even back in the day when they used to print Bibles and other texts in, in Germany, in Gutenberg, in the Chinese invented printing as well, the print press, and the Japanese used it as calligraphy. This is an ancient art of calligraphy and art and design. So this Lord Ipsum is 1500. Um, the dummy text of the printing and typesetting industry has been industry standard dummy ever since 1500 when an unknown printer took a galley of type and scrambled it to make type specimen book. It has survived not only the centuries, but also leaping to electronic typesetting. And then in the, 19, in the 1960s, with the release of letter set sheets, they used Lorem Ipsum passages to utilize it as design. So till today, the softwares and all the other websites use Lorem Ipsum. How cool is that? We're using a language that's like a, a dummy text that's 500 years old. And that's what this is here, even on a website, because you're not going to put real comments. Until you get the real comments, you put them in there. Anyhow, this is again another. What's that? Yeah, I don't think so. No. But it's like, it looks like a, it's a restaurant, an Italian cuisine restaurant, right? And it has a little bit of a Latin type of uh, elements to it. And, and, and with lorem ipsum, it, that's how it is, right? But you can see how this eventually can become like a real looking website. And then you can take the sections away and build it and stuff like that, right? So this is just an example. But look how many layers I have. Look, the pizza has its own layer, right? This is the specials and you have different images and stuff. This can really get intense. 
but all because Photoshop is able to handle it. And I'll show you some other professional templates that I've gathered and I use myself to show you how Photoshop is capable to do this. Your job is to know how to do it yourself and know how to use a template in case you come across one and know how to work with it. Just be comfortable with it, right? But it's easier when you do reverse engineering. You get to learn how to build it from scratch, then you can easily do it from any standpoint. All right, uh, so let me just put this one away. Don't save. I'll put this one away also. And last one. I can go to any website and create a wireframe of it right now. Um, let's go to Amazon. Just because, you know, Amazon is such a powerful platform and do you know Amazon has a fixed width? Watch this. If I make the browser lo longer, I mean wider, look at this gray area, right? What does that mean? From a desktop size, it has a fixed width of about 1500 pixels. How do I know this? Because I measured it. I'm going to use Command Shift 4. See, there's my cursor with, with different uh, X and Y coordinates. I'm going to start from here and measure the website this way and stop right at 1500 pixels. That means whoever designed this website constrained it to 1500 pixels in width. On the app, it's different. It's more responsive. Notice how Amazon doesn't care about doesn't care about this. Doesn't care. There's no responsive on Amazon. You know why? Because it has an app. <laughs> the Try refreshing the page. It can download the app anyways, right? So you can kind of whatever it doesn't. It kind of does have the menu though. Like you can still go here and and use the mobile setup. But technically. Most websites resize when you do this, right? Like I'll show you my dental, my dental business directory again. If I go to one of my platforms and I do this, if it's let's say a tablet, right? It's gonna look like that. And if, if it becomes, see, tablet view, then there's a mobile view. Look at that now. It looks like a mobile. If I open my phone, it's gonna look exactly like that right now. So it converted the website to a mobile format. So it looks like an app in a way, right? So I don't have an app, that's why. But Amazon has an app and they don't really care about what happens when you do resize. My point is you can measure most websites. They're around the 1500 pixel mark. Again, let me let me show you why I got 1500 because there's my screenshot. Yeah. Yeah, there is, eh? Okay. Measure it, eh? Nice. Very nice. Thank you for sharing that. Appreciate it. And, and does it work the same way? Yeah, yeah, one of those. Yeah. So if you have, if you don't have a Mac, because PCs don't have the shortcut capability, you definitely want to get the extension, measure it to get that work. Thank you for sharing that. So this again, this is the the area I screen captured, and this is 1500 pixels. Or use measure it to do the same thing. Um, so you don't have to measure it. You know what the size is. It's still 1500 pixels. Five years ago. Was the same thing. Didn't move much. Ten, 10 years ago, it was less. Ten years ago, it was like 1280, 1200, 1300, 1400 pixels. 20 years ago, it was about just under a thousand pixels. And if you want to, if you want to go 20, 30 years ago, websites were 600 by 800 pixels. <laughs> I still see some websites. Look, let me show you like the old Craigslist. Remember Craigslist? This is how all these directory ideas started, eh? When I do this thing. Craigslist. Like Craigslist, right? Look at these guys. Look, this is a website that's still out. It's still a profitable website. And it came out as the original, like, you know, Angie's List, Craigslist. Before the eBay, the eBay days, and then the, before Kijiji was even out, Amazon was selling books. Amazon was it was it is today, but these guys were around. Now look at this. This is just this is their website. <laughs> what do you think? Why is it cheaper to 
when they did, they lost customers. The people that are a certain demographic are used to looking for, oh yeah, marine. You know, they like to see everything at once. They don't like the drop down search method. That's the study that they concluded. Let's measure it. Commercial four. Yeah. Oh, no, nine, 960 pixels. It's a little less though, right? Anyways, here's the thing. When you do click on the logo though, it does take you to the more advanced thing, but it's still, it's still like, like, like this kind of stuff, you know, like, come on guys, Canada, like really, and that's still Craigslist, right? But if you go to Angie's list, Angie's list, they kind of stayed on top of the uh, Angie. Now it's called Angie. It's like got an app and everything. Now this is Angie. Oh, Homestars. See, they bought these affiliate programs. Homestars does all the renovation people that advertise their rental services on these websites. So they have another, this is what that, this will look like the modern sleek look, right? Similar to what all the other websites look like. So that's how evolution with websites happens from that to this kind of version. And then there's Amazon. <laughs> look at Amazon, right? So people love Amazon because of the way, you know, it's, uh, has all the different products and options and of course the inventory the the convenience of, and let's be honest the logistics yeah, i can buy something right now i know when i get home today before five o'clock it'll be at my front doorstep it's, it's scary right that's how fast these guys work that's why i get a prime membership so i know it's going to get there the same day and you don't pay for it you pay like a monthly fee and subscription and that's how they make money okay so let's say we're going to do an amazon website of um, a similar similar wireframe because I'm not gonna I'll need like more than an hour to do this right so let's say I do a screen capture and build this thing as a prototype for Amazon or maybe do another Amazon website right so I can basically do a screen capture right I can do a command shift four oh nice is it I should have logged in as my Humber <laughs> mail I'm a student. I think I already used it though. <laughs> so that's how I did a screen capture. Let's go take advantage of these free things, eh? You guys have a lot of perks here. I think you also have LinkedIn free too, the education stuff in LinkedIn. Yes. LinkedIn education. If I remember correctly, just So here we are in Photoshop now, okay? We're gonna create a new file. We're making a website, right? So we're gonna go to web category. What website size we are determined all these different sizes that coexisted before 10, 20 years ago. Today, we looked at Amazon, it was 1500 pixels. So if I do 1400 pixels, this will not accommodate Amazon, it's too small. 1920, a 1366 is considered most common. I think that's also too small. I'd rather work with a bigger format and fit the 1500 within that area. So I'm going to go with the 1920 1080, which is the web large format right here. Okay. The height is fixed to 1080 pixels, but we can always expand that. So if I select this format here, I can go to the right and say 1920 1080p and I have the artboards on or I can shut them off. This is when you have to ask yourself, do you need to have the artboards or no? Artboard gives you different pages for the website. So if you're doing a one page thing, you don't really need the artboards, honestly. But just to show you what they look like, I'll leave it on to show you what the option looks like. Uh, the length, I can always increase it. So I'll leave it alone for now. And everything else stays the same. Really, I didn't do anything. I just clicked on web, web large, because that's the biggest one. I'm going to click create button and there's the website. And you can see the artboard. Now the artboard is a tricky way to select it. You can click on the artboard or click on the file. Do you see that? It's where you click. If you click on the top corner, you select the artboard. When you do that, it say, do you want to make another one? You can make one to the bottom by pressing the plus button. Press the plus button here, plus the plus button up there. I just made four pages, you see, by clicking on the plus buttons. So you can easily set up a four page layout in any, it's just like Illustrator, right? Actually even better, it's more symmetrical. But if I press Command Z, Command Z, Command Z, just go back to the first one, right? 
this is the one that I want. I don't need four. Okay, I'm going to go with one for now. But if you want to make two or three, you can easily duplicate that same option. Click here and just use the pluses. Another way to duplicate. This is my favorite way. Ready? Because you because you might do an actual design. So you might want to do is this option. Drag or, or basically alt drag and you can copy an artboard too, just like you would an illustrator. Same thing. OK. All right. So now, uh, well, let's make let's make the height a little more. So I think um, you know, 1080 is not enough, so I'm going to make it a little longer here. The, the height, guys. I'm just going to go down to maybe you can even do it here. Oh, it's in inches. I want to do pixels, not inches. So how do I change the units? So one quick way is the ruler, Command R, Control R, right click, and change from inches to pixels. Another way to do it is go to File or Photoshop Preferences, sorry, Settings, and then you go to the um, Units and Ruler Preferences. But honestly, it's easier if I do what I just did. Ruler, right click, change the units. Otherwise, you got to go through these menus here, and then from here, you change it to Pixels. Make sure that this is set to Pixels. Type always stays in points, okay? But you can change the actual parameters here on the default okay so in case you want to do that i prefer command or control r that gives you the rulers and you need rulers okay because with the rulers now you can draw guides and stuff to set up your 12 column division for your website okay so command r or control r get the rulers and start drawing your guides what's the height going to be now it's 1920 in width i'll make it two thousand pixels in height so i can always make it longer after as i go along for now that's good enough i don't need the timeline i'm just going to close it and there's my website okay so basically i'm going to create a prototype that looks like amazon in photoshop okay um and you know i'll go based on what i see here on the model and i'll show you how the the startup phase will look like okay could i do this in illustrator yeah, you do this in Illustrator too. The difference between Illustrator and Photoshop is Photoshop has more tools that can help you do web production techniques. Illustrator is good for creating logos and drawings and stuff like you saw. Stuff Illustrator can do, Photoshop can't do too well. Stuff Photoshop can do, Illustrator can't do too well. So that's why you're using both tools as your arsenal, right? The both tools make you more powerful as a production artist. Okay, so. We're going to go ahead and do this now. When you do a website, it's usually set up into columns. OK, how you break it up, whether you're using bootstrap or other uh, stacking methods, right? Flexbox and uh, what, what are the other languages? What are you guys learning right now? Huh? Grade? Oh, great. Right. And then and then what else would you do that for? <laughs> And you know whatever whatever methods there always going to be new methods that can integrate. The point is, look, do the math. How many columns do you see? Four. One, two, three, four. This is one big long column, right? You got row columns and frames. Uh, you might have three. You might have two, but you don't see. You might see five sometimes. I don't know if they do the odd number, but usually it's three, four two six or one they all have a, something in common you know what the common thing is they all go into 12. 12 is a common denominator that's why what 12 column split is the best one so if i do the guides now let's say i'm doing a margin of i'm just gonna quickly do a guess here 200 pixels and i'll do 200 pixels and i'm really guessing here okay 17 20 this is 200 pixels here yeah, absolutely. If you forget the art, as a matter of fact, I don't like the artboards because I'm only going to have one artboard anyways. But if so, in this case, it doesn't matter if you have an artboard or not. But to show you the difference, I wanted to do it anyways, right? But if you if you want to make an artboard after, let's say you forgot, 
you can always right click on convert to artboard, I think. Yeah, there's an option there to do that, OK? OK, now watch this. You see these guides here? Look, I can do one, I can do two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever, right? I can split up into columns. I have to get the ruler out and measure and make sure all the same, 200, 200, 200. This was a long process until Photoshop got smart. I said, why are we wasting time doing this? Because we would do this once and make templates and use them later for the same thing, a blank artboard with guides. Because then you have also, if you go to view, show a grid, right? You have the grid too. You have the grid or you have the guides to work with. I'm using command apostrophe or semicolon to make these things visible. Now, let me just get rid of these, okay? Oh yeah, go to view, guides, because that's what these are, guides. They guide you into positioning elements like uh, typography and images and graphic elements. Clear guides, okay? So the new way right now to get this done faster, efficient, perfect, is to go to view, guides, new guide layout right over here. This is your little uh, trick right here, okay? The little um, option that gets this done. So if you go here, you can tell Photoshop you want to do a 12 column layout for the website, okay? You can also give it a margin from the left margin. I want uh, 200 pixels there, 200 pixels here. So I got 200 pixels here, 200 pixels there, and I have 12 column perfectly broken up into sections, right? And the top and the bottom are not that important, but I'll leave them at 10. The color, I'll make it a little more, you know, um, visible so you can see it. There we go, okay? So based on this guide now, I can see this thing work. There we go, right? Guide. How do you go back and change it? Same thing. You go to view, guides, new guide layout. If you make a new one, it'll clear the existing ones. So if I change my mind to, let's say, put four, it'll delete the other ones. Get it? So that's how you can do this nice guide layout. Once that's done, you can save this as a template. So I'm going to go save as, and I'll call this uh, website templates. I'll save it on the desktop, on the computer, and then we'll save it on as a Photoshop document, right? We're going to go here. All right. So now, um, based on, again, let's say a customer comes and says, we, I'm going to do an Amazon website. Okay. Uh, you can't copy Amazon because that's, you know, their proprietary use and design. But we could, like, who's to say I'm copying what? A lot of websites look the same. They all have a menu, a header, a footer, sections, banners, right? You can't prove you're copying a website unless you're taking their images and logos and uh, those proprietary things that I mentioned earlier. But the concept you can replicate anything from a design standpoint. A lot of designers do that. So I'm not saying you should do this, but let's just say we want to use an example like this. How do we make it a template for us to create our own version of, let's say, a similar design? Because because this is pretty standard. I'll show you, I'll show you 10 other websites that look the same as Amazon, okay? With, with the four columns and the two columns and all that stuff. So that's why I chose Amazon as an example. So I'm going to look at this and say, okay, so we're going to have one column here, the menu up there, the columns down here. So if I go over here now, the trick here is this rectangle tool. The rectangle tool is your main tool to orchestrate these design elements. So I'm going to go ahead and make a rectangle over here. It's going to be a shape, path, or pixels. We're going to go with the shape rectangle. All right, the color of the fill will be any color that you like. 
I'll go with this blue color here for now. No, grayscale. We're going to use grayscale because grayscale is easier to present to a template version. It has no color, no images. It's, it's a very simple schematic or a wireframe, low fidelity with only grayscale. So this way it'll present itself properly by doing that. This is like my maybe navigation. And if I want to change the color of this nav bar, I can do it up here on the right. Maybe I'll go with black. Okay. I can also change the height. 60 pixels. Yeah, that's fine. 60 is okay. You can make it a 100. You can make it less or more, whatever you like. Maybe I'll go with 80. Okay. All right. Next, I'm going to build the other block here. So that, that could be like the nav bar. So I just did the navigation bar. But the nav bar extends fully across the whole screen. So it could make a responsive measure for me to uh, take and to consider into account by pressing, uh, let me just go here for a second, right? And going to the, um, command T, I'll just transform it. And I can move it right down to the edge right here. Right. With 1920, I'll be very specific. I'm using my a numerical input here, height 80, X minus one. I'll put X zero and Y is 10 pixels. So it's perfectly set up on the full width now, right? So you can use uh, your X and Y coordinates and width and height attributes to make that bar go across like we did here. And if I want this color exactly, we're going to put the colors after. I'll leave it black for now. Then we have this other image banner that goes across. That's fine. So that's going to go right down here. We're going to use another rectangle tool. Okay. Deselect this one. Right down here, we're gonna do a slight overlap. Oh, you have to just pose it like that. The fill will be the grayscale option. I'm gonna go slightly darker. Okay, so it's gonna go like this. So this is how that's gonna work. Maybe I'll go use a lighter shade because it's a little too dark there. Okay, that's a nice gray area. If I notice um, the Amazon has a gradient fade. It's got like a green kind of color. I'm gonna use a grayscale fade. So if I go back here, I'm gonna do like a grayscale fade down, which means I can use a layer mask. I can use a gradient, whatever I wanna do, right? Um, let's use a gradient, right? So I'm gonna go down here or a layer mask. Let's use a layer mask. Layer, layer mask, reveal all, right? Same thing we did last week and same thing we did earlier today with that little review exercise. If I do a layer mask, I use a gradient tool. Remember the fish frog we did last week? You can literally go and control a layer mask. Oh, wrong way. Let's go the other way, this way to that way. You create a nice fade. Just like Amazon has this nice fade down here with the green, I'm making the same fade go down here with the gray, right? So that's how the layer mask works. No color, we're just using strictly different block elements to make the design. After we can change colors, put images, put text and stuff. Right now we're doing the bare bone basics here, okay? The skeleton. This is the skeleton. All right. And then we're going to put like the little arrows in the pictures and stuff. Those things you can add later. We're just doing the blocks right now. So I'm going to make, how big is this space here? Let me do command shift four. I can measure this all the way to about 240 pixels, right? And how big is the menu? About 40 pixels, right? I'm just doing an average. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. Right? I'm just showing you how to think and, and compare and do your own symmetry, right? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put the graphic elements here now.
I don't know what this rectangle doing. I'll just delete it. There we go. Perfect. So I'm going to use another rectangle here. This time I'll do four, right? So there's one. I'll change this to. Um, yeah, maybe a darker rectangle will do. This, by the way, should go at the very bottom. Okay, This should go right down here. And this should go at the very top. Oops. Top of that one anyways. There we go. So it's going to be like that. How many do we have? Four different sections for products. This is when you have to create your like an e-commerce platform or something. There's all these little thumbnails. We'll just have to make it. I know it's Black Friday sale. That's why usually it's not so concentrated. It's, it's nice and large and big with the images. So I'm not going to do the four. I'm just going to do one. OK, so this will be one, two, three, four. OK, so I'm going to do one. Now what's the height of this one here going to be? 200, uh, so width is 373, height is going to be 500 pixels, okay? 500 pixels, I'm going to go up here. Watch this now, option, drag, shift. So there's the copy there. On the gutter, I made it pretty thin. If I wanted to make it bigger, I should have done that from the beginning, you understand? Can I do it now? I can do it now. But don't do it like last minute. Like don't do it like, like when you're finished. <laughs> do it like now, or maybe like in the process of them doing this. I can go to Wind of View, um, Guides, uh, New Guide Layout, and say, listen, I changed my mind. I want to increase the gutter to 20 pixels, so it's a little more space. So this the gutter is the space between the columns. I want to make that 20 pixels. I can clear the existing guides, please. So just make sure this is on. Press OK. So now I got more of a space I can work with when it comes to these things. So back to this one. There we go. This one I'm going to delete because I'll take this and option drag it over here. One, two, three. And here's four. OK. And that's how you can create basically your website layout to accommodate your design for your website. And I'm going to keep going this now. There's another, you can do a split here if you want, you know, these little things. Another, I'll, I'm going to take this into my own creative design now. So maybe I'll, after this, I'm going to create another rectangle here. I'm going to go another one, two. Okay. So I'm going to go one and two. Right. And then I'm going to create maybe three over here. Again, two goes into 12. Two goes into 12, six times. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? Um, four, goes into, four goes into 12, three times. One, two, three. Now I'm going to do three goes into 12, four times. One, two, three, four. So it's a basic, easy fraction math. You don't have to be a math expert to do this. So if I go ahead and select this other one now, and do maybe I'll do the four column split. There's another one. This one will be uh, maybe a different color here as well. Brighter one. Okay. And of course, these uh, the gaps here. You can also measure those. You can also put guides like this. Okay. You can also do stuff like that to measure the guides and make them all the same width. I could have also done it from. I could have also done it from here. See, I don't do the horizontals. Because sometimes I change things, right? I only do the verticals. I stick with the vertical. The horizontal, it creates more steps, I think. Because I could do, watch this, see? Rows. I can do like 12 rows if I want. You see what I mean? I can do the rows. I choose not to because it's a little more creative that way. Plus, when you dump this into HTML, it doesn't matter. As long as your widths are consistent with your, with your placements, you're good to go. So that's why I don't bother with the rows. No rows, OK? Just do the columns, and then you do one, two, three, four. This one's going to go two, three, right? And then maybe I'll put the footer down here, and this could be like a website I can publish, and I can keep working on it as I go along. I can keep putting images and content and text and products, whatever I want. So right now the footer is going to go here, another element, and this will be the maybe the site map of the website. I can have different um, you know things. 
another uh, navigation position and stuff, so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm going to go like this here. I'm going to close. The, so the properties panel was a big part here because I could have done all my measurements here, my colors, my because when you put a rectangle and yes, Photoshop does rectangles like Illustrator. You're you're just like object control. You have your object control here because this rectangle that Photoshop made is like an object in Illustrator. That's all it is, right? It's it's a little different in terms of how it's selected. You have to transform it and stuff. But a lot of the things are done this way, and then. A lot of the layers are done this way. So look at all the layers I made right now. What's this last one I did? Rectangle seven. Oh, this is a, an extra one that I got to delete. Now, artboard one, because we call it the main page. Okay. The main page has all these different things. So it's important you clean this up. Okay. You clean it up so it holds uh, all the elements together nicely in place. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Save. Right, this is what the preliminary design might look like. And now I'm going to go ahead and um, move this in the right place. So let's identify what's what. So this rectangle here is, which one is this one? I got to zoom out to see better. Oh, that's, that's the nav bar. So we're going to call this navigation and i'm going to put it at the very 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 top like just dragging it to the very top because the order by default is from the top it goes to the bottom so you have to rearrange some of these things this is the nice gradient that i had here i'm going to drag this to the top as well over here so it's an order header or navbar there's that mask up there and then comes the other ones this is the footer so i'm going to call this footer and the footer is going to go at the very, very bottom. You can do this as you design it, so you don't have to do it like I'm doing it like last minute, but it's going to work either way. And this one goes on top of these. These are the four rectangles. They're going to go right to the top here. Now watch this. I'm going to start enough with these layers, too many layers. Let's group this into sections, okay? So these four rectangles, okay, I'm going to call it my, I don't know, maybe I can have testimonials or main products or feature products. I'm going to press Command G and I'm going to call it a feature, featured products, okay? Now I'm going to, I'm going to group these two together, okay? Uh, the navigation and the banner, and I'll call this like header, okay? So I'm going to group this and call it my header because the header uh, holds the navigation and the, maybe the hero banner on the top. So this is my header portion. This is my my featured portion. And the rest of it could be the main body of the website. So I'm going to have all these elements here. Maybe move these down. So these five layers here. I'm going to group those. Call it main. Main. And the last one, the footer, I'll put a folder for that as well. I don't have to, but I will. I'm going to press Command G and call this footer. I can even color label it. So the footer can have a color of maybe um, violet. The main can have a footer of orange. The feature products can have a color of green and the header because can have the color of blue, right? So now I color coded all my layers accordingly. And if I hit save right now, it's ready for me to implement. This is a low fidelity. This is when you can do some brainstorming with the client and say, hey, do you like this? Because this is what I intend to do. I'll put the navigation there. I'll put the banner here, the specials, and blah, blah, blah. So before you put anything, you discuss this point right now. And sometimes people can't see this as what it's supposed to look like. But if you look at the, the prototype we use, the Amazon here, it's not too different than what we did here. It's just this will look like that when we start putting the elements in place, okay? So you save this as a low fidelity wireframe, okay? So we save this as file save as, and you save it as a low fidelity wireframe. And now it's time to put some of the content in there. So first thing is we can start with the navigation. I'm gonna put a few menus that they have. 
browsing history, store, gift ideas, whatever. I can copy some of the names. Um, I'll just do this here. I'm going to use the, the text box now. So I'm going to go inside the header, right? By the way, you should also do this. You should uh, lock the guides. Very important. I should have done this from the very beginning because if you don't do this by accident, you can accidentally move one of these guides over here. See, you can disrupt your design by accident. Things happen. You can move this here by accident, right? And there goes your design. So you should always, always, when you go to view, lock the guides. Oops, almost cleared them. Lock. This way you can't accidentally move them. So now with the navigation in mind, I'm going to use the type tool, the horizontal type tool. I'm just going to click in the white space somewhere because I don't want to accidentally put it inside the box. Because if I click inside the box, it's going to put the text in the box. So be careful, right? Be careful you don't do that. I'm just going to press Command Z. I'm going to click on the white space so I can type the text separately and put it on top of the box. These are the little things you got to be careful about. It's still not perfected, but it's one of those things. So make the point size maybe um, 16 points, maybe more, because you can't see it. So 24, Command V, right? There we go. Space, space. Um, shift, vertical divider, space, space. This is something you gotta do in CSS and HTML, but just for now, for the visual, I gotta do something in Photoshop, so it looks like that. But the menu, you're not gonna do in a graphic application. That's something you can do in code, right? Yeah. What do you mean? Which guides? All the guides. Oh, that's just how it is. They're not going to stop there. They go the, the whole document, right? That's just how it is. Yeah. Um, I think if we don't have artboards, it'll still do it. Yeah, doesn't matter. It's just how it's done because it's infinite, technically. Because you might resize the artboard, the guides always stay the same. They're, they're, they're locked permanently, basically, right? Um, so what I was doing here with this menu, I'm just trying to show you how you can basically integrate this stuff here. Browsing history. And really on a website, you're going to put home, about, contact, products, services, whatever the website might have. I'm just using this menu here. Why am I even bothering with this here? Let me just delete it. I'm just going to delete this whole thing. I'll just do a simple menu here, guys. I don't know why I'm copying Amazon stuff. I'm just going to click here and type home, right? Space, space, vertical divider, space, space, about us, space, space, vertical divider, space, space products, space, space, vertical divider, services, um, gallery, history, FAQ, frequently asked questions, and then contact, okay? Whatever the website navigation might entail, you have to put that in there. And this is how you put your uh, nav bar in place, okay? So I can, I can like center this, okay? How do I center this perfectly? Let me make it a little bigger actually, so you can see it. 30 points, sure. How do I center something in Photoshop perfectly? So watch here. Because this is a floating element, which is like text. What I want to do now is look up here. 
I can go left, center, right. So you can go perfectly in the center, okay? This is your alignments right here. So you can perfectly align it in the middle, and that's how the, the, the content will be perfectly centered in that area. I'm just gonna hide this for now, okay? Save. Uh, this, this could still qualify for a low fidelity wireframe because sometimes you have to show this detail for them to understand what this is, right? You can even put things like, let me just put another text box here. Hero banner, main, main feature, right? So sometimes you have to do this. To show them what exactly this section is going to do. It doesn't have to be so bold. I'm just going to make it uh, light. Okay. So it'll demonstrate the actual uh, proposition. Um, these other parts here, you can design them as well. Product zero 01. Oh, I should lock this. Um, sometimes it's better to lock these layers. Remember before I showed you how to do this, just hit the lock button. So this way they're automatically locked and you can't accidentally do anything to them. So that's always a good idea. Make this a little bigger here. Well, maybe I should lock these as well. Lock, there we go. So I got product one. Product two, again, another locked one. Right? Product three. You have a um, Another thing called distribute horizontal. Why is this happening? I think I'm overriding it with the way I'm holding the shortcut. Yeah, it's a little tricky, this one here. You really got really to nail it right in there so you can kind of get the right one. And this is going to be product four, right? And you can center these if you want or whatever, right? So well, it's nice to kind of put description in each one of these little rectangles to demonstrate what they are. I strongly suggest using like text fields to show the clients what this, you know, website wireframe might entail. And of course, everything fits in this beautiful 12 column layout spread. And um, then once it's approved, you can put video, right? Video, advertising, advertising banner, um, you know, podcasts, whatever they want to put in there, these elements, social media, we forgot the social media part, right? The social media things you can put in there. So whatever this is, it's going to be built as a wire. This is a, a wireframe grayscale. So basically, if you go here, I need you to do this for this project because it's a one pager. You got to do a wireframe and you have to also present this to um, um, the clients before you make the website. So this is why There's it right here. Okay, so when I say I want to see a grayscale wireframe mock-up, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I'm talking about. Right here. Okay, grayscale wireframe mock-up. Okay, and then you're going to create a high fidelity complete mock-up. So you're going to save two separate files. So once this is saved, right? You're going to go to layer or image and you're going to duplicate or save it as another file, like whichever way you want to do it. This is already saved. It's already saved. So I'm just going to go file, image or layer, duplicate, image duplicate. This will be the high fidelity. Okay, high fidelity. This one I close. 
That's what I keep. I'm going to start you off on this one a bit today. I want to keep going, okay? Because I, I don't want to stop the video and stuff. It's recording right now. So I want to finish a few points. Next week, we're going to continue this. And then I'll get into the generation of assets part. How to make this into bits and pieces to go into HTML. Because one thing is making the design. Another thing is how can we practically use this for a real website? I don't care if you use WordPress or if you're doing this in code or you're doing it for whatever system you got, you're still breaking up the graphics or the images, okay, that you can use in your code. This is why this is good in both, way, uh, both ways. So now let's say that's the point. We're ready to make this a real website. So we, we, we take, get rid of these little, little text boxes here, right? All these text boxes can go bye-bye. The menu can stay. The menu is good. But this, uh, I'm just going to lock this option here. Right? To change the colors again, you click on the color here. You change it to any color that you want. We can just double click. Use the color wheel. And you can pick another nice color that'll work with your with your design. And that's like the Amazon blue that I had, but I'm not going to copy their color. You can use whatever I want. This is an image of a, another design that goes through. It's like a background texture, so you can easily replicate that. If it's uh, kind of like the holiday season look, so you can definitely um, unlock this layer here. Right, this is the layer, and you can definitely put an image in there that goes in the same composition as that, or put a texture. If I want to put a texture in there. I can double click on the on the side of the layer here. Let me teach you how textures work. So if I go to texture or pattern overlay, so patterns or textures, right? Uh, there's also the texture here with the bevel. So I would just stick with the pattern for now. I can pick a different pattern. OK, you can make your own custom pattern like these don't look too well, right? This one might not look OK, but but then you can also um, change the scale of the pattern. You see, see this pattern Look, can scale it. Right like that. You can create your own pattern. Let's see, you want to create a cool matrix. Uh, zero and one pattern or something cool like that, right? So I can easily go here. I'm just going to, hey, can we just use AI? Let's try it, right? Why not? Move we'll over here. We're going to make a selection. OK, we're going to use the autofill suggestive option here. Contextual taskbar, generate fill, matrix, background. Pattern. Let's see. Or we can do a holiday background pattern or any type of suggestive thing you might have. You might have to go to, yeah, this is not going to work well. Yeah, I think I, I selected. Yeah, it didn't like that prompt at all. <laughs> so I'm just going to delete it, right? Maybe I'll use another. Um, I should use a layer, like a separate layer for this. I'll create another selection. I'll try it again. Holiday background pattern. Festive, and of course you can do prompting and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to generate. And this could be a pattern that I can save, I can use, I can expand, I can do whatever I want with it. Let's just see what I'm going to get with this. Again, it keeps giving me this pattern based on what I'm doing. So I'm not too impressed with the AI so far. Maybe it's the way it's perceiving my, you know what it's doing? It's AI, AI is being too stupid right now. <laughs> it's looking at my my wireframe and it's trying to match it. That's not what I want. 
So sometimes it's better to do it separately and then bring it in than do it in Photoshop. Or sometimes when the design's done, AI can do a better job. So it's still in the infancy stage. I'm still not too impressed with it. So, okay, so having said that, ladies and gentlemen, let's go over here. I'm gonna get a nice festive background right now. So we're gonna go festive background, okay? Of course, I'm gonna go to images here. And yeah, you know, whatever. If you wanna use Google to get a nice festive background, go ahead. Here, this one's gonna be quite festive. What do you think? So I'm gonna right click, copy image. I can also save it and bring it in. Let's go to uh, save image as. It's probably better that I do that instead. Festive background image. I'm gonna go to my desktop here and save. All right. Delete this layer. And now, as far as bringing images in Photoshop, it's quite simple. You simply, look at this, drag, drop, right? That's it. You bring it up here, press enter, right? Look where the image is. It's on top of this rectangle. Remember the hawk with the clipping? I hold option and I click between the two. You know what's going to happen? It's going to go inside like that, right? So now this image is trapped inside my rectangle and I can use that as a design element, right? It looks all right, I think. Depends, depending on what I do with the rest of the pictures and stuff. But this now becomes my, my header and it overflows to my navigation, right? Okay, now let's get some images. The image is already provided to you. I'm gonna use the, well, let's first put this in the same folder. I'm gonna go to my um, folder here, class 11 web. Okay, if you haven't downloaded the images, make sure you get the it's just better than searching the internet all the time so if you go to the um module folder here go under um, class 10 11 photoshop website web page image sources let's get that file downloaded right now it's going to help us build this faster and then you can get any images that you want based based on the website that you're making so i'm going to save this here we don't need none of these other ones. I already showed you what they are, so I'm just going to leave that alone. There's the zip file. Let's unzip it. And there's the images. Okay, so all these images I got off uh, sources myself, and we're going to use these images. These are dummy images for the website. So I got my product feature rectangles here. How easy it is to place images and clip them is very simple in Photoshop, but you gotta kind of be organized. So you click on the, look, this is my target, that right there. I can target the left one right here. So I select that rectangle, identify it by doing visible, invisible. That's identified, right? Now I go to file, place, embedded. You can do linked, or embedded. Linked means you can edit the content externally like you would on a website and it'll update the HTML file, which is kind of cool. So I'll show you that too. I'll show you. Embedded means it's part of the file. You can't edit it outside. But the benefit is if you lose it, the file is still part of the file. If you lose it the other way around, you might lose the source. It's a little more, you're compromising a bit. Okay. So I'll show you both examples. Let me do linked. Okay. So place linked and go to my uh, folder here, image sources. I use linked right now. I'll show you why. Yeah, no, not drag and drop file place linked. So look at this. I got a picture of these shoes right here. And they're going to go about this area. I'm going to resize them. I can even rotate them. 
put them over here, right? Press enter. Option, click between the two layers to clip it inside. Option, click. It fits perfectly inside the image. This red thing going behind, I should put it in the back, not at the front, because it's interfering with my design. So we'll have to pull this out, or per purposely maybe my, my features products has to be on top of the header, just for that reason. I don't want this thing to interfere. So I just purposely put the product features on top of the header arrangement. That's fine. I mean, you, you call the shots basically, right? All right, the next, and you can edit this image after. You can click on it. If you double click, if you click on it this way, you might have to actually go to the product features. Maybe, maybe let me just lock, let me lock the header here. So I don't accidentally select it all the time. If you select it this way or this way, you can select the content in here, right? I think I have to unlock this now. There, just unlock these. Okay, there we go. So I can lock, I can move this picture wherever I want. I can then resize it, bigger, smaller. You see, it's gonna work perfectly with my, um, with my placement, right? So you can do whatever you want with this picture here. Next one, click on the next one. You can move it here, you can see it. File, place, links. Again, I'm using links, right? So link file. I'm going to use this picture of the, she's wearing a nice uh, scarf garment there. So I'm going to resize this one here and put it right in this area. Press enter. Notice I'm purposely making the images bigger than the rectangle because I'm going to go here and do option click. I'm going to hide them in there, right? Because I'll put them right inside the box. And then I can control the positioning once a minute. I can still resize it smaller bigger don't go too small because then it's going to give you that space you want to make sure you fit it perfectly so so far i'm using links what linked also does is this if i double click on the image it opens it up separately so if i want to change the color of the shoe this red here remember if i go select let me just do a quick selection with this let's do color range select color range and I'll select the yellow the yellow shoe right and the glasses and I change the color of them to something else I'll do hue and saturation I'll change it to I missed a few but that's okay I'll change it to green let's say okay so it's green right it's green I hit save save i go back here it's green so that's why you can edit the images separately if you place them okay i'm going to press command z command z i don't like what i did i'm going to press save again edits the file but do you, do you get that okay because it's linked right if it's not linked you can't do that but so what you can zoom in and make the changes on the picture anyways, right? But if it's, a, if it's a picture from Illustrator, like a logo or something, you can edit it in Illustrator. And when you update it, it'll update it in Photoshop. That's the real advantage of having linked files because you can link the Illustrator file in Photoshop and you can link images too. Okay, I'm gonna place the next ones with the normal place command. So I'm gonna go file, first identify the layer. With the move tool, always, always use the move tool instinctively. Click on the, 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 the rectangle. Make sure you identify it so it's visible, invisible, right? Go to file. I'll place embedded this time. I'm not going to do link. I'll do embedded. I'll click on a different image. Right? And I'll make it smaller. I'll press enter, option click. The image is there, same as this one. Place embedded. 
I'll do another option for that one. Okay. Press enter, option click. So you can see slowly how I'm building the visual of the website uh, with putting the right images, uh, the right things in there. You might want to put the content and all the details. You can dress it up as much as you like, okay? But this is how it all starts. If I want to put in, uh, you know, maybe some some content over here. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Alt Alt click or Option click on a PC. Yes. On the image, because it, it goes inside the rectangle. So the image is on top of the rectangle is here. Image is here. When you clip the image in the rectangle, the rectangle becomes the mask. The image is always underneath the. The image is always on top of the rectangle, because the rectangle is the mask. I know it's the opposite in Illustrator. Illustrator is the object, image, clip. Photoshop is image, object, clip. Shopping is back. Okay, it never went away, but sure. Look, my Photoshop is glitching now. Really? Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's test this AI one more time here. Okay, I'm going to do another selection over here. Okay, I'm going to put a new layer. And I'm going to call it, uh, give me here, uh, presents or gifts stacked on top of stacked on top of each other let's see oh there we go not bad this one, that one, I'll go with this one here. So it did give me this little presence design that I did from the AI generated fill, right? So we can do that and so on and so forth. You know, you can see how this is developing now. You can put the little details and the little messages on top of the website. You know, we can basically, once you add all the details, we're not too far away from designing a similar website like this, except the backgrounds are white and the images and stuff. And, you know, you can definitely create your own um, design from almost anything that you want to replicate. And of course, the detail is what makes it look more professional. Sometimes it's too busy. You have to just keep the colors more, you know, consistent with one another. Uh, you know, keep it simple. OK, keep it simple, but very aesthetic. The fonts, be careful. Typography is very important because typography can ruin your website if you use it wrong. If you look at most websites, they use the proper type, nice clean fonts. You don't want to use uh, Times New Look, shopping is back. Can you imagine they use, uh, you know, Times New Roman? Like, what do you think of that? Shopping is back, right? Doesn't look that bad, but it's mostly for prints. It's serif fonts. Sans serif is more modern for web. Okay, and please don't use fonts like uh, you know.
like the cursive ones, you know, the fancy ones you can't read. So be careful, make sure the type is legible, it's clean, it's modern, sleek, and it fits your design, okay? Um, so next week, we're going to continue with this. I'll save this file. I'm going to keep showing you how to integrate more of methods of clipping images. There's another tool I want to show you. It's called the Frame Tool. Photoshop has a new way of putting images in a website. So that's a new tool that came out a few years ago. It's right here. So I'll go over that tool next time. And then we'll slowly get into how to pr pr produce the package contents of the website. So then I'll show you how to generate image assets, how to split all this up into sections, how to slice the website, because then you can optimize the images for HTML. And this could be, honestly, we can make this a real website next week, even in HTML, using the HTML export option. But it won't be responsive. Like it won't be what you're doing right now in the other classes, which is more advanced technology and um, integration with with the you know compliance web standards of today so this is more like an older system but it still works in terms of presentation when you do the html this way and of course you do it your way when you take the images and sources out okay because that's what it comes down to all right any questions so far because i'm going to save this Yes, uh, not in that sense, not like InDesign or Illustrator. It doesn't have, because Photoshop file is just one long file, but it does have the option to generate image assets, which means all the sources, you can put them in a folder. There is a way, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll show you next time. All right. I'll say this is a Photoshop file and just do a simple save as. So we went basically from, you know, just to kind of close this down here. So next week we'll continue with those lesson files. We covered a good ground today on how to do this. So before and after, you can see here, right? How we started with the grayscale wireframe and slowly we're gonna build this into like an actual website and you can make it look like any type of website that you want. Of course, it doesn't look like all that nice, but I'm using my, I would maybe use better images to accompany the look. Sometimes I have, these images don't go together, but if I did, I would put real images of gifts and stuff, make it look a little, you know, festive and whatnot. But either way, your, your choices, images, backgrounds, colors, that's something you're gonna focus time on. The main thing is putting it together, knowing the process and getting this done. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson. I'm going to wrap it up now and I'm going to close this recording session and I'll see you all in the next video. So thank you for watching and have yourself a great week ahead. I'm going to just quickly go to my camera here. Stop sharing. All right, so I'll see you all next week. And I hope you guys learned a lot from this lesson. Don't forget that review file that's there that I mentioned earlier today with before I started recording the video. And don't forget to hand in the Facebook advert because it's due today as well. OK, so having said that, I wish you a great week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.